Buen Camino, everybody. Today we're back to my book review series, which has been neglected for a long time, all year, mostly because I never get anybody to watch these videos. But uh, today I want to talk about the, I think it's like the fourth book that I read this year, but it's the first one I'm going to review. Three of the books I'm going to review all are connected to Rebecca Scott, who's someone who lives on the Camino and is an editor and author. Um, one book I want to review is her book, uh, Furnace Full of God, that was just released last November. And it's a very popular book with uh, pilgrims and Camino enthusiasts right now. And uh, another book I want to review is her book, The Moorish Horror, which is a novel that she wrote, which is also about the history of Spain, about medieval Spain and an Islamic princess that becomes a war bride to uh, the northern Christian kingdoms and how her life turns out. But the book I want to review today is one that she did as a translation. So it was the trilogy, there's a novel, there's a memoir, and then there's a translation. And so this is the book that she translated into English. It's written by a Spanish uh, Basque author who actually passed away uh, shortly after he completed this book. It's The Great Western Walk, Great Westward Walk, uh, by, I'm going to try, try this, Anton Gonzalez... Gabarin or Bolitics? Bol Bolitics was his nickname. Um, so Gabarin, he um, he completed many Caminos uh, and he was a writer before this book. So this isn't just like a Camino memoir published by someone that just had an experience and wanted to publish their Camino memoir. He was, he was an author and he published a lot of things before this book. I don't know how much of it has been translated into English. This translation was kind of done, it's kind of like self-published. Uh, actually, um, Rebecca Scott, Scott's other books were also kind of self-published. There's a, there's a press called Peaceable, Peaceable Publishing um, that she published her other books on. Uh, this one, I think, was just kind of arranged by his friends and, or people that knew him to have this translation in English. And don't judge a book by its cover, but I do want to talk about the physicality of this book. I ordered it on Amazon. It's huge. You can see how huge it is. Like, here's that pilgrimage book, which is like a small hardcover book. Just look. This thing is massive. And there are some errors in it. Um, I know Rebecca Scott was also like the editor and translator on this. Um, there are some errors. There are some spelling errors and just like, not even spelling errors. It's like, it's like random letters thrown in the wrong spot on a couple pages. Um... And the other thing about the book physically is that not only is it huge and the, the cover is kind of too floppy, you could have you could have easily had this book in a smaller part, but if you see the spine, it's just not aligned the way you think it would. So when it's on the shelf, it's always going to look upside down or backwards unless you put it upside down or backwards. So physically, I hated this book. And this book was like made for me because it's, I think, like a print-on-demand option through self-publishing. So you can see... It was made January 13th, 2020 in Middletown, Delaware, made in the USA. So it has one of those little things in the back that tells you when it was printed on demand. So physically, I hated this book. When I was carrying it around in my bag, it got curled up and it took me a while to read this. Why did it take me a while to read it? It's a very good Camino memoir. Um, I could definitely recommend this book. It's, it's going to get my endorsement right away. I still think the best Camino memoir that I've ever read um is going to be to the field of stars uh check out my previous review on that if you haven't it's it's the best communal book that i've read and i also really really like rebecca scott's memoir which isn't necessarily a camino memoir it's more a memoir of living on the camino um and then also later on she does a camino but that's not the entire narrative of the book where this is, is once again you know starts with the start of a camino ends with the end of a camino uh one thing that I, I really liked about this book is that it's written by a Spaniard, by a Basque, who starts out in Basque country from his front door. And hey, he's done the Camino before he's done the Francais and things like that. But he decides to do it in that old school way of just leaving from your house, setting out from your front door, you know, being Bilbo Baggins, setting out from the front door, not knowing where it's going to lead you. It's going to lead you to Santiago, hopefully, or even to Finisterre to the end of the world. Um, and he really wanted to do that kind of traditional Camino where you leave from your house and you walk to Santiago. And I don't know if he walked back. The end of the book definitely does not cover a there and back again scenario where he travels backwards. Um, 
So I don't know. And he didn't really make his intentions clear. He starts out going very, very hard. <laughs> like right away, like he's, he's doing a lot of distances and he's talking about how his body felt and everything when he's alone in the first part. Cause I mean, he's not on an official trail at first. He's just walking from his home and walking these smaller feeder trails to get to the old Bosque way and then to get to the the Frances. And so at first he's very, very much alone and he's like, just like almost purposely physically damaging himself. And I, that part of the book, I was a little bit disturbed. I was like, please stop. Like, he's like, well, I made great distance today and I could stop now. But like, if I go on further, I'm definitely gonna get injured and be suffering and hate my Camino. So I'm gonna do it because I feel like that. And it's like, he knows better. Like he knows what to do not to get blisters. And then he just does that thing that will give him blisters. And like, he knows that like weather conditions are bad. And then he goes out in them and like, this whole time I'm like, man, this guy's gonna have some major injuries. So he definitely did the Camino in like a, in, in the beginning, I was just like, slow down. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, like other great Camino memoirs, I think that the book shines when he has his descript descriptions of people. I think that that's one of the best parts of the book. And maybe it's the parts that I enjoy the most is his socializations. And it was the same thing with In the Field of Star or To the Field of Stars. I really like the interactions with people and there's definitely more of like a pattern to this book that you could start to follow like with the chapters when he would go through a day and there would be like kind of his internal thoughts and then his interactions with people um and it started to feel very rhythmic kind of like kind of like how a long walk goes or walking the Camino or, or just any kind of um uh any kind of long walk you start to get into a rhythm and you like feel a rhythm. There's also a rhythm to the way that he writes and there's a rhythm to the story and there's a rhythm to his words, even through translation. And so maybe credit to Rebecca Scott or maybe just a credit to what a great writer he is that that rhythm is very, very captivating. And you kind of feel, um, you feel yourself going on this journey and kind of keeping pace with this guy as he makes this trip. And so I thought that the book reads like a walk. It reads like something where you fall into rhythms and, and patterns. I don't know if that's a great way to describe it, but it, the writing the writing feels like walking. I think that that's great for a Camino memoir. I also think it's great that this was someone who had experience with the Camino and wrote about this specific experience because it was so different, because he was kind of doing this in a traditional way, which obviously isn't available to everyone. I can't walk the Camino from my house. There's an ocean in the way, but if you live in the Basque country in Northern Spain, you're like right on the Camino. so it's possible. And then people were like, well, why didn't you just do the Del Norte? And he's like, well, I have this connection to the Frances already. And so he wanted to do that, but he wanted to do it from these traditional Basques, uh, pathways and feeder trails into the Camino. So I thought that that aspect was really fascinating. He's also, and I think Rebecca Scott maybe notes it in her intro. He's a bit like vulgar at times and, uh, very flippant about things and, and especially like his social relationships and some of the people that he meets along the way. He never really has a Camino family, so to speak, but uh, his descriptions of people that he meets again and again and becomes friends with that, you know, kind of come and go, uh, it's it's kind of funny because he seems like kind of an antisocial guy sometimes and he kind of reluctantly is drawn into like liking some of these people, even ones that he couldn't stand at, at first. Um, especially towards the end, there's some people that he meets, but then there's also just some like Germans and then, there's these guys that are like smoking pot everywhere they go. And he's like, well, they're having one heck of a trip, you know? Um, and so I thought that he also wrote in a very natural way. And the translation feels very natural. There's parts of it that are written in the Basque language. And there's poetry and songs and things that are, that are translated. And it's interesting to see a side-by-side -side translation in the book. Um, so overall, I would say this was a great Camino memoir. Uh, it took me a while to read it, I think maybe because my enthusiasm for the topic kind of waned. So I started reading this book in January and I got through about half of it and then I kind of got stuck. And then when uh, we went into uh, quarantine for Corona, then I suddenly got this inspiration like, oh, I'm going to finish this book. And, and when I did, the last hundred pages kind of went by very quickly once I was back into it. Um, so through no fault of its own, this book took me a long time. Um, you can find it on Amazon. There's no publisher. It's a self-published book. It's called The Great Westward Walk. There's the author's name 
because I've butchered it so much. Um, and if you probably look up Rebecca Scott, it'll also come up. And I'm going to review a couple more of her books. But other than from the field of stars, if you're looking for, you know, a native of Spain, a Spaniard or a Basque perspective on this Camino, this was a, a great book um, about a very unique type of Camino. You know, the type of Camino that starts from your own house, that's done alone, that's done a long past that we're familiar and in your home country, but takes on this very kind of special meaning in this way to do this in a very traditional way and on these very traditional routes and someone that's deeply connected to the history and culture and it's native to that history and culture doing it which i think a lot of our perspectives come from books that are written from people like myself they're very foreign to the region and then it's like you go there but you really are are you know auslander <laughs> you're an outsider you know you're a foreigner and then you're experiencing this and I really liked the, the local native perspective of someone from Spain that was able to do the entire route from their house um, and do it in that kind of traditional way. And I don't know if he walked all the way back, and I would have liked to read about that. If he did walk all the way back, that would have been really interesting to hear. And I'd really like to read a memoir that includes like a reverse Camino or a return trip. So if anybody knows of any books like that that have the reverse Camino or a return trip or if somebody does the Camino backwards, like, or does it as a round trip i would love to read like that because i think that would be so much more interesting than reading another narrative of someone's camino to actually get that entire perspective of of pilgrimage as a circle and as a return home um that book i'm still looking for but this one i come highly recommended i'm gonna have more book reviews on the channel soon because in quarantine there's nothing else to do so bon camino everyone and uh, take care of yourselves.